So how do we go about testing controls? Well, first things first, the most important thing is that we have to identify the control. You cannot test a control unless they tell you in a question that that control is there. So that's crucial, guys. It's no good knowing all the different controls that are available and then going and testing all the different controls that they should have. You can only test what they have. So guys, this is very different from a weaknesses type question, where, which we had covered in test one, where we took their cycle, compared their cycle to the ideal cycle, which was the cycles we did, and where there were differences, we picked up that there were weaknesses. So them not having a control, we were then saying, hey, there's a problem, you don't have it. Now when we come into the testing side of things, we can only test what they have and what is in the scenario. So now I'm not worried about comparing their cycle to what I know the cycle should be, because it doesn't matter. What they don't have is a weakness, but I can't go and test that. So I can only test what they have. So now you're looking to try and find as many controls in a scenario so that you can go and test that. So when you're reading through, you must be trying to identify manual or programmed, automated controls. And when you're identifying them, then the easy part is finding a way to test it. So how do we go about then once we have it? We develop our audit procedure to test whether that control is effective. And you stop there, guys. You don't have to go further and say, if the control is not working, then we're going to do this. You just have to write down what your test is. And then you don't need to conclude. Unless the question says, conclude on whether you think you should adjust your audit plan. Now having tested the controls, and obviously you can then see that they don't seem to be working planning, which case you would say, yes, I should actually probably go a more substantive route because the controls don't seem to be working. Okay, so a quick little recap on our controls to help you. Your key controls in a manual environment, we said segregation of duties, more than one person performing a function, isolation of responsibilities. When somebody does a function, they need to sign so they can be held responsible for that function. Access controls, security, physically locking up of goods, having security guards present, having gate control, good source document design, having their documents pre-numbered, reconciliation, matching, Matching documents to each other. And then I have made a note here of your IT controls, which I've then put over here. All those general controls, which would have to be there before we were looking at testing a balance or transaction. So when we're looking at actioning the audit plan, we're going to be focusing at testing these application controls. Because those are the controls that are present for the recording of balances and transactions. What were those? Those access controls, which here was your more logical ones, which were your username and password. Your batch controls, where they actually had to have a batch control sheet. With batch totals. Financial, hash, record counts, screen aids, where they had to have all those different screen aids, minimum entry, mandatory field, drop down arrows, prompts, formats, your program checks, limits, size, sign, range, reasonableness, sequence, missing data, verification, and logs and reports. Those logs and those exception reports. So I have to see them in a question to pick up that there is something I can go about testing. And once I've identified them, 
I then need to develop a procedure to test. So how will I test my manual controls? I will use inspection of documents and records. I will observe processes and procedures. I will reperform recons and processes and procedures that they do. And I will inquire as a very last resort. And so therefore, guys, I would probably not have an inquiry in any of my procedures. But if there's nothing I can think of and I know I need to put another procedure down, you can inquire about that control. So that's how we test manual controls. How do I go about testing automated controls? Those controls we just looked at, logs, screen aids, access controls. I can test some of those by doing these manual controls. Okay, think about something like a log, which is a report of what's happened. I can go and inspect that log to see whether the controls were actually working. Or I can go and inspect, inspect that exception report to see whether the control didn't work and was overridden. So I can use these procedures and I will use these procedures. So guys, don't think because it's an automated system that you're only going to be using automated tests. You will use manual tests. But then there will be controls that are automated that you cannot use a manual test to test that the control is working. And those controls we will then have to test using test data. Test data is also referred to as a system cat. So, a system cat, a test data, all you're doing, guys, once again, is what this English definition of test data would be. It would be saying, put in data to test the control. So how do we do it? We input data into the computer information system to see that the control works or that the control doesn't work. And we have to do it for both criteria. So when we do test data, we do attempt to input valid data that the control should allow to work. So what do I mean? If they have a control, let's say the control is a limit check. And the limit is 500 Rand. I can say, attempt to input 300 Rand. And the limit should check that 300 Rand is below 500. Therefore, that is acceptable. And then I need to go and see that when I do go over the limit, that it now doesn't allow that to take place. So then I need to go and input invalid data. So 550. And test that that limit works. And that limit was 500. And the control should reject that data because it was in excess of that limit check. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're testing... The control allows valid information through, but prohibits invalid information through. What are those controls we're talking about here, guys? It's all of these controls. All your access controls, your screen aids, your program checks, your logs. Batch controls, remember, have a manual component. The manual batch control sheet with manual batch totals calculated is then input into the system. Okay, so only when we're talking about it being in the system can we talk about using automated procedures to test the controls. 
Okay, so what's going to happen most likely though, guys, is because you would be getting a mark for valid and invalid, but it's the same procedure ultimately that you're doing, UNISA will generally say, if you are going to use test data, please only discuss invalid data. So although in reality, if you are testing an automated control using test data, you would put through both valid and invalid. In a test, you're likely to only be putting invalid just to get that one mark. Okay, so let's just quickly throw out a couple of tests here and see that we're on the right page. So if we said access controls, they have to have the username and password that allows them access into the system. So my test data would be attempt to gain access with a different username and password or a fictitious username and password and I shouldn't be allowed to. Okay, a screen aid. Mandatory field, you have to complete all the fields. So attempt to continue without completing all the fields and you should not be allowed to. All right, so that's just a few suggestions. Now what I want to do is actually get you guys to write them down. So I've put here some test of controls. I've put the manual ones, manual controls down here. And then I've put, I want the test of control for that manual. I've given you some to help you so that you can then develop for the others. So wherever there's a blank, I want you to do it. And then also for your automated controls, which are here, here's the test of control. Again, I've given you some to help you and I've also shown you sometimes that an automated has a manual test. So when you go about putting through the test for these, just try to consider that there could be a manual way to test this. Okay, the only one you don't need to do is three because there isn't actually a test for screen aids in general. Here's the specific screen aid from four to eight that you must test. Okay, and then your pro program checks, again some examples, and then your automated output controls, reports and logs. There's a manual test here. You can go and think of some others to test. So guys, I'm going to give you guys five minutes to just work through that. Put down the tests that you think you could use just based on the control there. Okay.